Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our Head and Neck Anatomy series. In this video, we're going to be talking about the muscles of facial expression. So these are very thin muscles that are responsible for making facial expressions, like smiling and frowning. They're formed from the paraxial mesoderm of the second pharyngeal arch. Remember, the muscles of mastication came from the first pharyngeal arch. And so these muscles are going to be innervated by the cranial nerve of the second arch, which is cranial nerve 7, or the facial nerve. These muscles originate from bone and insert into the dermis of the face, making the facial skin particularly mobile. Also interesting, the facial skin is continuous with the mucosa of the oral and nasal cavities and the conjunctiva, which is the lining of the eyelids. These muscles are generally named by their action or location on the face. Let's start with the two epicranial muscles. So the occipitofrontalis is also known as the epicraneus muscle, and this is a long and wide muscle spanning from the eyebrows all the way to the back of the head. The epicranial aponeurosis is an important structure, and it connects the frontal and occipital bellies of this muscle, and it also forms the middle layer of the scalp. So one way to remember this is that the letter A for aponeurosis is in the middle of the word scalp. You can also choose to remember that the skin, connective tissue, aponeurosis, loose connective tissue, and periosteum are the five layers of the scalp, each one corresponding to a letter of the word. This muscle pulls the forehead up and also retracts the scalp. The temporoparietalis muscle is located laterally on the side of the skull and it runs transversely, perpendicular to the occipitofrontalis. It sits over the temporalis muscle. Next, let's talk about the muscles involved with smiling. And in parentheses is how many individual muscles there are. So note that all of these muscles we're about to talk about are paired. There's one on the right and one on the left. So the zygomaticus major muscle originates from the zygomatic bone, which explains the name. It inserts into the modiolus, and the modiolus is an important structure and an important term that we should go over for the board exam. It refers to the chiasma or intersection of a whole bunch of facial muscles, just lateral and slightly superior to each corner of the mouth. It's a really important structure for moving the mouth and again, I would be familiar with what it means for the board exam. This muscle pulls up the corners of the mouth for smiling, laughing, and displaying the teeth. The zygomaticus minor muscle also pulls up the corners of the mouth for smiling, laughing, and displaying teeth. Note that it originates a little more medial to the zygomaticus major muscle. It inserts a little bit higher up and just overall, it's a smaller muscle, hence the name minor. The orbicularis oculi muscle is the eye sphincter that closes the eyelids. The palpebral portion is in line with the actual eyelids, and it's responsible for blinking. The orbital portion is the part that goes around the orbit of the eye, and it's involved with tight closure. The muscle also protects the cornea. The eye muscle called the levator palpebrae superioris is the one that opposes the action of the palpebral portion, and it opens the upper eyelid, whereas the, this muscle is responsible for closing the eyelids. This is also the muscle that forms the superficial border of the periorbital fascial space that we talked about in our fascial space infection video. The levator labii superioris are broad, flat muscles that elevate the upper lip. So it does exactly what the name says. It elevates the superior or upper lip. These muscles originate just below the orbit. Next we have the levator anguli oris. These deep muscles raise the corners of the mouth medially. Again, the name tells you exactly what it's going to do. It's going to elevate the angle of the mouth. 
These muscles also insert into the modiolus. It originates from the canine fossa just below the infraorbital foramen. And lastly, we have the rhizorius, which pulls the lip laterally without displaying the teeth, known as a grimace. It also inserts into the modiolus. All right, so next we have the frowning muscles. And note that the orbicularis oculi is included here, even though we already went over it as one of the smiling muscles. So it's actually activated in both smiling and frowning. Also, there's a lot of variation depending on how big a smile or frown you make. And there's actually been a lot of debate whether smiling or frowning requires more muscles. So don't worry about that part. Just focus on recognizing these names as muscles of facial expression and their general location and function. All right, so the orbicularis oris, not to be confused with the orbicularis oculi, is the mouth sphincter muscle that puckers the lip, compresses the lips against the teeth, and is also used in speech. It blends with the buccinator muscle laterally, and it also inserts into the modiolus. The buccinator is also a muscle of facial expression that we'll talk about a little bit later. The depressor anguli oris pulls down or depresses the angle of the mouth. This muscle originates from the mental tubercle and the lower border of the mandible, and like the other anguli oris, it also inserts into the modiolus. Next, we have the depressor labii inferioris, which does exactly what it says. It depresses the inferior or lower lip. The platysma muscle is a superficial muscle that pulls down the lips and the mouth and wrinkles the skin on portions of the lower face. It's a bit confusing because the bulk of it is actually located on the neck, but it's considered a muscle of facial expression, not a neck muscle, and is thus innervated by cranial nerve 7. Again, this is a superficial muscle that's wrapped in its own superficial fascia, and it overlaps the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is a neck muscle. Next we have the mentalis muscle. This is a deep triangular muscle that pouts the lower lip. This one originates from the mental tubercle of the mandible. And this word mental is not only important because it refers to mental dental, but mental in this case relates to this area of the chin. Mentalis strain on lip closure is a sign of lip incompetence, which is something we talked about in our orthodontic series, and it can also displace a lower denture, which we talked about in our prosthodontics series. The corrugator supercilii is way up here, and it draws the eyebrows together to furrow your eyebrows. And the procerus is this pyramid-shaped muscle that wrinkles the bridge of the nose, again involved in a frown. All right, and there are just two other muscles of facial expression I want to cover, the buccinator and the nasalis. So the buccinator is a really important muscle, and it originates from the maxillary and the mandibular processes, and it inserts into the modiolus, where it blends with the orbicularis oris. So that's what we were talking about before, this orbicularis oris muscle connects to the buccinator muscle at that point. And also remember that the deep portion of the buccinator attaches posteriorly to the pterygomandibular raphe, which is a ligamentous band of fascia that attaches the buccinator to the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle. It's responsible for tensing the cheek to keep food between the teeth. And also, drinking through a straw would activate this muscle as well. It's overlain by the buccal fat pad and pierced by the parotid duct. And lastly, we have the nasalis muscle, which is responsible for flaring the nostrils and compressing the nose. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing to this channel 
for more on dentistry. If you're interested in supporting me and what I do here, please check out my Patreon page in the links below. Thank you to all of my patrons here for all of their support. You can unlock extras like access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams, so go check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.